guys, I'm Eliza Wood, this is my channel, and let's talk about me. I mean, our wind's coat. You know what I meant. So we had to split Arwen's coat in half, and I mean the video, not the actual coat that would look weird, in half because it wound up being too long. So this is the second half of that video. Um, so if you haven't seen the first part, it's probably a good idea to go and watch that one first, and then come back to this episode. Episode? But anyway, let's get started. Okay, so we have a pattern drafted. Now one thing I do want to mention, make sure you add in your ease. I know it tells you to add in ease when you do the pattern drafting, but I was like, no, I don't need any ease. Who needs ease? I want it to be tight fitting and look beautiful. And I will forever regret this, mainly because right now I have almost no movement in my arms. I mean, I can get it to about here and maybe there. So, my, my I do have a problem with ease on my arms. So again, make sure you do ease. And when you're doing the ease, make sure you're aware of how thick your material is going to be. Suede, even this... Um, Bow suede is a thicker material than you would normally use on uh, a bodice. So make sure you give it a little bit of extra ease in order to account for how big your seams are going to be. How thick your seams are going to be. Also, another thing to take into account, um, I, I think I mentioned this during the drafting of the skirt, but look, go right there. I try to put a little bit more flow or I never remember what that word is. A little bit more flow into the coat. And you can see it is kind of doing this like sticking out and I really love that. But you can also see it's doing a kind of puckering right here. And that's not a really pretty thing. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to put a little bit of extra material. It's okay to do a tiny bit. And by tiny, I mean tiny bit. But don't put too much in because the weight of the suede is just going to try to pull the fabric flat, which is going to cause puckering on the ends rather than um, in the center like you want it to. I don't have that problem so much in the front, but it, it is a problem in the back. Anyway, back to the sewing process. So now we've made our drafting, we want to make a mock-up. Now. I usually hate mock-ups because why in the world would I want to sew things 50 million times before I actually get to sew it as I want it to be. But I'm the type of person that if it doesn't turn out perfect in the end, I never finish it. Because that way it's not my fault that it doesn't look good because it's not finished. If it were finished, it would look great. So I tell myself and then it just kind of sits off to the side and never gets done. So I really do suggest doing a mock-up, but again, remember, when I did my mock-up, I did it in muslin and it fit perfectly and I was really happy with it, but muslin is thinner than my suede, so it did get a little bit tight when I made it out of suede. Oh, before I forget, before you put in the sleeve, you gotta embroider on this, well, okay. This design, can be put on multiple ways. Once again, um, it can either be stitched on, it can be um, embroidered on, it can be, you can put, you can use a sharpie, like a silver sharpie to put it on. Um, on the actual coat, I think it was probably embossed, but I don't think you can do that with bow suede. So I went ahead and I embroidered my pattern onto my coats. In order to do that, you have to have a flat pattern piece. And so do this before you attach your sleeves. Because that would not be fun to try to embroider this. I used a tearaway interfacing. There are ones specifically for embroidery that you could use. I put that tearaway interfacing on top of a picture of the Arwen um, shoulder pattern 
which I'll put up here, and I traced it. I used red pen. Please do not use red pen if you're going to do the same process. I will forever regret using red pen because the ink of the red pen actually went onto my thread. So my thread now had, it was a silver color, it now has a tint of pink to it. Again, not something you would notice unless you knew it was there and you were probably close up. And I could probably actually wash it off, but I am deadly afraid of washing my coat and damaging it and having to remake the whole thing. So that's probably never gonna happen. Well, I mean, I have to wash it eventually, but it'll be, it'll be some time before I actually am like, yep, I gotta wash this thing. Cause I don't want to damage it. Anyway. Once you have the tearaway interface and you want to attach it to your um, fabric, I used, I think I used pins. It's not a huge deal what you use, but. And then you just want to stitch the pattern on. Now there are two different stitches that you can use for this. There's the back stitch and then there's the stem stitch. There are pros and cons to each one. The back stitch will give you a more straight line, but you can see where every stitch starts and stops. So you can see the bumps of the, of the um, thread, each stitch. And I didn't particularly like the look of that because it, it did look like stitching and I wanted it to look more like the embossment. So I went ahead and I went with a stem stitch, which is pretty much an upside down back stitch, but both of these I'll try to find a way to show you guys these particular stitches. But in this case, you get an overlapping effect. So each thread is comes back about midway, each stitch starts about midway back from the last stitch and then goes um, ahead of it. So since they overlap the, the points in which they they, uh, the needle goes through, you don't ever see that one spot where the needle you don't ever see that one spot where the needle comes in and out. Um, the con of this stitch is that it does look a little bit more sketchy rather than a straight line you get a little bit of, of um, starting and stopping and so it, it, it it's all about your preference, what you want yours to look like. I wanted a stem stitch, so that's what I did. There are other embroidery stitches that you could probably use too. Most of them I thought were probably too thick to try to use on such a small embroidery. So I went ahead and didn't use them. But, um, but I am happy with the way it turned out with the stem stitch, although there are some places that it does look a bit sketchy. And uh, I would pref prefer to do it better next time, but next time will be a while. So I wanted to show you guys how I went about making the embroidery section of my coat. Um, so I have here, this is my hoop. And I just grabbed a piece of scrap fabric. Now, ideally, you wouldn't want there to be empty space. Um, you would want it to be completely surrounded by the hoop. Because if you don't, you have this kind of loose area. And that's going to pull your stitches one way or the other. But since this is just scrap fabric, I don't care to try to fix it or get a bigger piece or anything like that. So this is just a scrap fabric. You can see I drew a couple of lines on it. You wouldn't want to, of course, draw these lines straight onto your fabric. So I would use a tearaway interfacing, but I don't have any more of that. So um, I'm just going to follow these lines. And also this is a penned line. You probably don't want to use a pen. I just grabbed a random pen and drew a line. Um, so I'm going to follow these lines and just show you the difference between a back stitch and a stem stitch. Um, so what you're going to need is the hoop and the fabric, uh, and you'll also need just a regular sewing needle. 
I'm using this thread. Hopefully it'll show up. If not, I will have to change. It's just a random thread that I had laying about. And then of course you need some scissors. Okay. So I use a really long thread for my hand sewing just because I don't like to have to tie it off and re-thread it and all that, but you do have a tendency of getting knots to occur in the actual stitching and that you have to undo. So it's dependent, it's all about which one you find more annoying. I find it more annoying to have to re-thread my needle, but some people find it more annoying to have to take apart a knot in the middle of the fabric. And I don't know why my camera refuses to try to see white, so we're going to do our best to try to show you this. Hopefully it'll show through, but um, it's, it's not being nice. Okay, so we're going to start with a back stitch. This is the one that you're going to get kind of a line, but you're going to be able to see the stitches. Um, so I have a knot at the end of my thread. Um, this is also the kind of stitching that I did for the actual sewing the seams. So what you're going to do is you're going to do your first stitch, and then you're going to go forward the length of a stitch, and come back. I'll try to get that a little bit closer so go forward a certain amount however long you want your stitches to be and then go back to where your last stitch maybe was now you would want your fabric to be a lot tighter but again, this is because I don't actually have it on a very good um, hoop. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my straight line and then go back for the curve. Okay, so while the chipmunk talks in the background, I thought I should mention that the way that I'm currently stitching right now, where I never actually reach under the fabric is um how i wound up stitching the coat but you shouldn't be able to do that if your fabric is correctly in your hoop all right so as you can see hopefully so I, as you can see i finished my back stitching now, because I was doing this really quickly, I didn't really bother to make my line straight or to um, keep my stitch length uh, even. But those are things you might want to make sure that you do when you are doing your stitching. So now let's move over to this middle line where we're going to work on the stem stitch. The stem stitch is the one that I used for my coat shoulder. Um, I prefer the look of it, but it's all up to you guys what you prefer. So, for the stem stitch, we're going to start with our first stitch, just like we did on the back stitch. Just to lock it in place. Now, instead of going forward like we did with the back stitch, we're actually going to go back to the first to where we first came out and then we're going to go forward a stitch length and then come back to the end of the last stitch so let's see if I can get this a little bit closer so go forward a stitch length And then go back to the end of the last stitch. 
forward a stitch length and then back to the end of the last stitch. So let me go ahead and do that one real fast. Now I do realize that my descriptions are not very descriptive and probably kind of hard to follow, so I'll try to find some good actual tutorials on how to do both a back stitch and a stem stitch, and I'll put that in the... Oh gosh, I never remember what that thing's called. Summary below. So then that one is, that one, is the stem stitch. I prefer the stem stitch. In my opinion, it looks a little bit kind of like a sketch, but you can't see the stitches. Whereas with the back stitch, you can see kind of the stitches. And with the um, stem stitch, you can't really see the stitches. But it can look kind of bumpy and uh, sketchy. So, uh, again, that's your preference, which one you think does a better line. So, I wound up using the stem stitch for the embroidery and the back stitch, actually, for the hand sewing of the coat. Okay. For the sewing, I had every intention of sewing this darn thing on my sewing machine. I had it all set up, my sewing machine was out, I had everything ready on my sewing machine. I was like, there's no way I'm hand sewing this because I can sew on so many different projects even when I had a sewing machine. Don't know why, but whatever. So I said, no way I'm hand sewing this, I'm gonna do it on the machine. Put it into the machine and the machine would not feed it. The fabric just refused to go through the foot. I probably did something wrong with my sewing machine because like I have very little experience with sewing machines. So if you know what I might have done wrong, could you like maybe give me some suggestions in the comments below? But anyway, continuing on. So I did wind up hand sewing this entire project by hand. I didn't bother trying to make the seams look absolutely beautiful in the sense of the stitching because I didn't want it to be visible anyway. So you can't see any of the stitching here, but I did wind up doing back stitches because I knew my coat was going to be rather tight. So I knew it was going to need to keep some strength in the seams. If you make a, a looser coat, you might be able to get away with doing a different type of hand stitch if you want to do hand stitching, but honestly, I seriously suggest you guys do it on a sewing machine. Oh, and another tip, this is another thing that I messed up on. When you are doing your princess seams, mark out where you're going to put your cording because on several, <laughs> because I had to take it out, I think I was working on this back seam here because this is another place you got to mark where you're going to put your ribbons and I think I had to take it out three or four times to put it back in because I put my ribbon in. I didn't put it in the first time. I put it in incorrectly the second time. It didn't look right the third time so I had to put it in four different times and it's not fun to do that when you are hand sewing every single stitch. I mean, I didn't have to take out the entire back seam, but up to the point where I needed that ribbon to be. Especially because this ribbon, I don't know if you can tell, is actually folded over in half. Um, so there is... So what it looks like on the back is... Um, is this width, but the actual width of the ribbon is this. Because I wanted it to be a little bit more flowy, I wanted it to be able to open up if I moved around it at all. 
So I wanted it to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more volume. So I went ahead and did a double. I went ahead and did it folded over. But originally when I did it, I did it flat on the back, which was way too big on the back. So I had to do double. Anyway, this is a long story that you probably don't care about. Now another thing that I want to point out is the shoulder piece. The way I did the shoulder piece is I kind of did this like eye shape. I don't remember what that um, what that uh, is called, like what the shape is called. But I'll put a picture of it up here so you can see. Um, I made that shape in the fabric. I folded it over in half and sewed it so it was flat, and then I ironed it, of course, and then I sewed it into the shoulder along with the sleeve. I have since realized that it probably wasn't done that way. Um, I believe the way it was done was they would make the shoulder of the sleeve too big to fit in the project. So then what they would do was they would fold it in so there would be some puckering, but this would actually be the excess sleeve. So the excess sleeve would be folded over and um, sewn in here. So you can do it either way, but if you do do that, I think I had the problem on, yes, it was this sleeve. So on this sleeve, you can't see it from far away, so I'll probably show you a picture of it. I actually have a little bit of this shoulder piece is coming out on the back. It's not noticeable when I've got my arm down because my arm is in the way. Um, it's low enough down you can't see it, but it's something that will always irk me. So in the future, I will probably wind up remaking this and fixing a couple of things. Speaking of fixing a couple of things, you probably noticed that this is a different color than what you see in the movies. So I chose to go with a blue because I saw this behind the scene picture um, in which it looks more blue than it does gray. But the problem with that is I realized afterwards it's probably the lighting of the museum that's making it look this kind of bluish color. And if I wanted to look more movie accurate, I should go for the gray. So in the future, when I do remake this coat, it's going to be gray. But I really, really, really like the blue, actually. I think it's really pretty. It just doesn't quite fit the movie. I mean, it is recognizable as Arwen's coat, so I'm not mad at it. But in the future, it'll be gray. Okay. So once you've got all your seams hand sewn, or however you want to sew them, I neglected to put in any sort of lining which I think you could probably make the lining out of the same material as you make the underskirt out of. But I chose not to because I didn't want to have a whole bunch of fabric all over my coat. And my coat's already going to be hot. And I'm going to wear an undershirt. So I thought there's no need for um, any lining. But because I didn't have any lining, I did have to tack down all of my seams. So as you can see here, and I'll get a close up, as you can see here, I did tack down each of the seams using a fell stitch. Now, the problem with that is when I did the fell stitch, I folded over each of the seams so that um, you wouldn't get any fraying on the edges of the seams. Unfortunately, what I neglected to, to take into account was that I was going to have to sew through each of those tacked down seams to get my baseball stitch. So if you're going to fell down, if, if you're going to tack down your seams, um, I would just put it flat. Don't fold it over. Don't do anything that's going to put more bulk into your seam than it already has because your baseball stitch is going to be a pain to get through. It's already painful enough to get through two layers of fabric, but to get through three layers of fabric, that's just, it's painful. 
I literally had to use pliers to get my tapestry needle out. Okay, so now back to the hoop for the um, baseball stitch. Now you don't want to use the hoop if you're going to do it the same way as I am because you've already sewn together your coat and you don't, there's no place for the hoop to be used in this case. I'm only using the hoop right now to show you, hopefully with a flat piece of fabric, what I'm doing, um, but you don't need it. So what you're going to need is a tapestry needle, which you probably can't see that well, and some cording. Again, since this is just a scrap, I'm using a thicker thread, I'm not actually using any cording. Um, But, so I'm using a thicker thread instead of instead of cording because this is just um, a scrap and I was not going to get out the pliers just to show you guys how I did the baseball stitch. I started at the seam on the shoulders on both sides. So I first did the back and then I did the front starting at the shoulders working down to the waistline. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our stitch at the shoulders and you're just gonna pull the thread through Woo! maybe if I can do that without totally throwing things off and now you want about twice the length that you need to get down to the bottom of the thread I think I might have gotten a little bit much but you want to pull your thread so that it is halfway through your fabric. So grabbing my two halves. It's okay if it's not exactly halfway, but as long as you have enough to get down to the bottom of the line on both sides, you're good. Now where did my needle go? There it is. So this line here is my seam line, and that's what I'm going to be following. Now that we have our two halves, we're going to put our needle into the center piece. Being careful not to pull it through the other side. And then go over about a stitch length. Whoop, I pulled it too far. And then go back to the center. Go to the other side, about a stitch length. You want to try to keep these guys as even as you can. Let's see if I can't get a little bit closer. Okay, so then we're gonna pull through to the other, go to the other side. Now remember, this is the kind of stitch that they would use to actually, well at least in, I believe it is, to actually sew their suede together, so there wouldn't be a seam that they were using. So you do want it to go on both sides, you don't want to just have one stitch go down the center, go down on one side and the other stitch go down on the other side, because then it won't have any effect. I mean, it will look the same, but alright, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there because you get a general idea of what's happening. Um, now, now I got to go to the other side and grab my other thread. And we're gonna do the same. Ooh. And we're gonna do the same but opposite on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into that center stitch. Ooh. Come over about a stitch. And then go into the center. Go over to the side. 
and then go to the center. So the two stitches together, I'm not doing this very evenly, but So the two stitches together is what makes the, woo, goodness gracious, is what makes the baseball stitch. Oh, that was way off. So again, I was doing it kind of messy, so the stitches aren't even, but I think you get the general idea. And while we have the coat open, I'm also going to mention, when I first sewed my coat, I did not have any idea what I was going to do for the collar. There were several suggestions. You could use crinkle fabric. You could use, um, some people use, I think, uh, like that, that fabric, um, Oh, I forgot what it's called, but it like makes a 3D effect on your fabric. They use that. Um, I wound up going with this fabric, but it was at the end when I was almost done with the coat that I made the decision to go with this fabric. So I couldn't put, I couldn't attach the collar into any of the seams that um, already existed because there was no way I was taking them out again. So what I wound up doing is I attach the collar along the edges and I also came all the way down to the waistline simply because I wanted it to be that if the coat no matter where the coat flips open you're still gonna get this kind of collar but I also couldn't go too far in because it would create more bulk deeper in so I went ahead and sewed the fabric using my initial pattern that I already had. Sewed it all along the edges. And then once I was done with that, I pulled the fabric. This is a kind of stretchy material. Not too stretchy, but a little bit. I pulled it tight and I, again, fell stitched it or whip stitched it. I'm not really sure which stitch that is. Um, onto the fabric. When you're doing all these stitchings, the nice thing about faux suede is it is thick enough that your stitches will not show through if you're careful to only get the, the um, to only get like the lower layers. The other problem I have with not doing the lining and felling down your stitches is that in this case, on top, you probably can't see it in the camera. This is something that I noticed because I know it's there and it's probably not that big of a deal, but I can actually see the line of the um, edge of my tack down stitch because the fell stitching is pulling on the fabric and making it tight against that spot. It's not a huge deal, again, it's, it's just something that I noticed and in the future I'll probably just give this coat a lining and not worry about tacking down the stitches because I just think it'll look better. So the last thing that I did was I attached my underskirt. The underskirt is super simple to attach. It's just following the same method that you would attach the overskirt. Just sew it on to the waistline. I attached them at the same time actually. I might have attached them at the same time. Anyway, um, just go ahead and sew on the underskirt to in the same way that you would attack the overskirt. All right, now what am I forgetting? Oh yes, finishing. So, my hair is getting all over the place. I went to Starbucks after getting all ready because I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta show off how pretty I look. And I have a convertible. So of course, bright sunny day, I have to go with the top down. And my hair, which is a wig, was totally destroyed. 
so sorry for like the messy hair because I didn't want to brush it again before doing the video because I'm lazy but yeah. anyway finishing I'm gonna get there eventually so there are two different methods of finishing other than the uh, tacking down the seams so when I'm talking finishing, I'm talking edge finishing. There's two different methods in which I finished my seams. The one for the underskirt is a rolled hem. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you a I'll go ahead and find the tutorial that I used for that. I think it'd be easier for them to explain it than it would be for me to explain it because I'm not a very good sewer. Um, the thing I like about this hem is that there's no stitch well there's supposedly no stitching uh visible on the outside of the fabric unfortunately i don't know if i did it wrong or this just is too thin a fabric to try to do that but you can see like every now and again there is a stitch um every like inch or so there is a stitch visible and that's just something I'm gonna have to live with. Again, not very, not really something you see from far away, but when you're close up, it is kind of noticeable. The other finishing method I had was the for the faux suede. I thought about doing a rolled hem so that you wouldn't be able to see the hemline, but I really wanted it to have this kind of crisp edge that the um that a normal suede would have because you wouldn't have to actually finish the uh you wouldn't actually have to finish the edges of a suede of a real suede i don't think so i wanted it to have that kind of crisp look of an of suede but i don't want it to be frayed so what i wound up doing is i wound up folding the fabric over and then uh, stitching it as close to that fold as possible and then cutting off the um, cutting off the edges as close to the stitch line as possible and now I don't want it to fray because I did that so close so I did actually wind up using um, some fray check on the edges now I really like the way it looks from far away from close up, I used a back stitch to do it, so you can see the stitching if you're like really, really, really close. And I really need to stop looking at the coat when I'm trying to talk to you. But like if you're really close to it, you can still see the stitching. The only problem with doing that method is that um, you can't really see it on the sleeves, but it is more noticeable on whoops, the overskirt. It, it's bleh. because I uh, because I tried to do it on a curve. I don't have anything to release release the tension on that curve, so it's trying to pull itself open, and it does wind up flipping the hem, so you can see that kind of ugly edge. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. It might just be something I have to live with. Of course, after that. I found this book, which let me go get the book. It's this book. It's called All New Fabric Savvy, the Indispensable Fabric Guide for Sewers. And I found it at Joann's, and each page has a different fabric. How to use it, when to use it, all that sort of stuff. And it has on here somewhere faux suede. So. It has an actual page for faux suede, and it says that in order to do the hem, you should use a fuse hem. So, good to know for the future, and I will definitely keep that in mind whenever I am, um, whenever I am working on faux suede again. But overall, I'm kind of happy with it. And I think that's everything. So there you have it, Arwen's coat. At least the outer portion of it. Um, well, most of it. 
you can probably tell I haven't actually put the hooks in that I was talking about, I think, at the beginning of the video. And honestly, I haven't done it yet because I don't want to. So I'm putting it off until after I make the corset portion of it or the armor portion of it because I'm hoping that once I make the armor portion of it, it'll sit correctly and it won't need the hooks. It probably will. I'm probably deluding myself. But you know what? A girl can dream. But anyway, so um, you can also tell I've finished the undershirt, which is why I have the undersleeves. And the fact that you can see it under the coat where it's not supposed to be seen is one of the reasons I made a shirt rather than just the sleeves because I previously made a, um, I previously made Arwen's battle outfit from Helm's Deep and it looks nothing like Arwen's actual battle outfit. So I'm definitely gonna remake that one, but I closed it in the front completely by dress hooks and they kept snapping open. Luckily I was wearing a dress underneath, but I didn't want that to be the case with this coat where it would open and not have anything underneath. So. I went ahead and made a shirt rather than sleeves. But overall, I'm really happy with it. There's still some things that like, I wish I could do better. Like for example, the fact that I didn't give myself any ease. So I can go about here on the sleeves and that's about it. Um, and I can get a little higher up, but anyway, so, um, so ease is a little problem, problematic. I probably should have given myself some more ease. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with it. And one more thing, uh, and also the edgings, I probably, sh I wish I had done the correct edging. But honestly, it's nothing that I'm like super angry about. I spent a lot of work just making the coat, so I can't really just be angry at it even though there are some things that I just like, I don't like it, <laughs> but it's okay. So this is the first try for me and it's one of my first cosplays that I've ever made. And I'm still, I've sewn for a while, but I'm still pretty new to sewing because although I say I've sewn for a while, I do like stints of sewing. But anyway, um, so I hope I hope you, I love to play with the sleeves. The sleeves are fun to play with. If you want it, come and make it. I don't even know if I'm holding the sword correctly, but that's neither here nor there. So if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, please like, and if you guys want to see more, like how I made this undershirt, which it's not going to be too complicated, but I can still go through the process of it and how I make the rest of her outfit, including the belt buckle, because you're probably looking at it going, something is missing. Um, then please subscribe. If you have any suggestions on how I could do things better, whether that be YouTube, sewing, talking, you know, all the things, um, please comment below. And I hope you got to blah, 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 blah. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.